Uh, hello, everyone. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, my name is Sławomir Jasek. I've been dealing with InfoSec for quite some time now. And recently, I provide also smart lock picking trainings about insecurity of modern smart locks, home automation, and access control systems. And today, I'd like to debunk some common myth uh, that hacking RFID requires some elite knowledge or advanced expensive hardware. And I think that, that despite the fact it's pretty simple and uh, pretty well documented all over the internet, it's somehow beyond the reach of most of us. So uh, today I'd like to offer you a red pill uh, that will unravel at least a little bit of this mystery and uh, hopefully uh, encourage you to research this topic further. Uh, or at least raise some awareness, uh, which is always the first step to mitigate the risk. Uh, so um, I will try to squeeze as much as possible practical information. So for some slides, it might feel that it's too much information to parse, uh, but uh, don't worry, the slides will be available for download, and I will definitely tweet about it. Uh, so I prepared it as a future reference for you for your own practicing. So we'll cover most common systems, uh, UID-based access control. We will, I will walk you through cracking MIFA Classic. Uh, and we'll decode the data stored on the card, including one uh, hotel system <laughs> that I cracked. And I've created MasterCard uh, that unlocks all the, all the doors. But uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you all the technical details about it, because the vendor doesn't plan to patch it. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I will also give you a small sneak peek about my recent uh, research regarding mobile access control systems that unlock uh, the door using NFC of your smartphone. So uh, just an obligatory disclaimer, I'm sure no one of you wants to get to the jail, so do not attempt to break the law. Um, <laughs> I believe you are pretty aware that uh, mobile, uh, that NFC RFID is everywhere. It's used for access control, bus, train, uh, tickets, uh, e-wallets, loyalty cards, and so on, contactless payments, uh, and even a tiny tooth-mounted sensors that can track what you eat. Uh, but where do we start with these cards? Well, first, you need to know that there are various, a uh, lot of various different types of cards. And most commonly, they are divided into, into uh, several uh, types based on the frequency on, the, on which they work. So we have so-called low-frequency cards. They are uh, quite often referred to as RFID. Uh, for example, EM tags are very common. Uh, we have the high-frequency cards, um, like MIFR. Uh, we also have uh, lots of different systems uh, working on uh, different te technologies, but we will not uh, focus on them today. Um, and how do you recognize the card type? Well, I if you just take a look at it, um, it won't tell you much, because uh, this may be uh, low-frequency or high-frequency card. So just by the look at it, you, you usually won't be able to tell uh, what type of card it is. Uh, Actually, uh, the coil itself can be pretty small. It can be even implanted in the hand. By the way, Patrick is, is a very nice guy, so if you are interested in this topic, he will explain all of this to you. Unfortunately, we can't use implants for now as uh, bus tickets, because uh, especially if, if, if your name is Meow Ludo Disco Gamma Meow Meow, uh, who was fined. Uh, despite having perfectly valid bus ticket, but built into his hand. Uh, but uh, going back to how can you actually recognize the cut type, uh, well, the, the most simple way thing you can do is just to use your mobile phone that operates on the high frequency. And there are three mobile applications that I will reference to you uh, a little bit later. And if your mobile phone it just simply recognizes this card. Uh, it, <laughs> it means it will tell you a little bit about it, but if not, it's probably the low frequency. Um, so uh, let's start with access control. Um, the simplest access control systems just store UID on the card. 
And the UID is just a few bytes. Um, it's, sometimes it's random. Um, it's read-only, and, uh, and it's freely accessible to read. So anyone can, who is in close range to the card can read it. Uh, and the reader just checks for the registered UID, whether it's valid or not, and gives you access. So uh, the whole security of this is based on the fact that, that the manufacturer sets this UID on the tag, and it cannot be altered because no one else knows how to make such tag. Uh, and guess what happened next? Well, of course we can, we have tags that can change this UID, and depending on the technology, you can use T577 or or the magic UID for, for MIFR, and you can buy them for like 30 cents at this moment. Um, and, but if you actually want just to clone a, a, a card, a UID, you can just simply buy this uh, $9 uh, uh, RFID card cloner, uh, and it will do the job. You just uh, uh, press, read, read the original card, you press it against the card to duplicate, or you can use an also other form factor, and, and it's done. It's basically it. Uh, so uh, if you compare this to, to a typical, uh, most common USB uh, NFC reader uh, that just allows you to read the tags, not clone them, uh, it looks like a little bit overpriced. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, we have uh, Leaf NFC. Uh, it's an open source library that uh, uh, exploits hidden row modes of this chip. And uh, this row mode allows us to do uh, a lot of interesting things, uh, like emulating cards, uh, cracking them, cloning, and so on. Uh, and the good thing is that you actually don't need to buy this one, the USB one. You can just simply buy a PN532 per module. Uh, that comes for s starting for uh, four dollars. Um, <laughs> well, actually, the, the, the cheapest ones have uh, usually poor antennas, but uh, well, uh, <laughs> oh, this is how it looks like. Um, but uh, it usually works good enough. Um, so uh, we have prepared. Um, we have selected the, the ones that, good, that work good enough and have created some, uh, some called NFC Research Toolkit uh, that you can win. Uh, and I have several of them to, for you today. It allows us to crack my five clone, uh, uh, clone cards and so on. Uh, and we've provided several, uh, several challenges also. Um, so um, I will start with the first demo. Uh, I have a, a simple access control system that just by um, when I press a valid card, it unlocks my magic box. Uh, so I will just uh, place this card on on this board. Um, hopefully, uh, okay. Uh, so, I will just list it and have the, uh, I don't see it from here, uh, but I have a valid UID, and then, oh, here it is, <laughs> okay. Uh, then I will just take this magic card uh, and pl 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 place it on, the, on, this, uh, uh, on this reader again. Uh, okay. I will just set the U UID. Uh, okay. Sorry. And uh, it should now this magic card should unlock this, and it works. It's just that simple. Uh, and 
it works for a lot of access control systems. Um, like, I've seen it in banks and uh, offices and apartments and so on. So, um, you might be surprised in how many buildings it, it works. Um, but uh, we can actually detect such cards because they rely on a magic special commands. So there are systems that can contaminate such, such malicious users uh, and detect such cards and just discard them. So I have a first question for you, and I have reward for, <laughs> for the answer. Um, what, what's the Chinese answer to this problem? Uh, so, we have magic cards, and they are recognized by the systems. So, what, what an attacker can do? Yep. Um, yeah, well, you're close. <laughs> I mean, there are cards that, first, there, are, there were cards that uh, uh, created uh, this uh, that allow you to change without this magic command, uh, but then uh, there came cards with one time write. So I guess I can accept this answer. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so, so now we have uh, cards that allow you to write uh, this UID only once. Uh, so next time, I just it's not you cannot uh, tell it uh, whether it's original or not. And uh, by the way, if, if you use seven byte UID, there are also, of course, seven byte magic cards. Um, you can also emulate a card. You can use, uh, for example, this small uh, device uh, that can emulate up to eight cards, I suppose. Um, and uh, there is also a smaller one uh, at $45 uh, with interesting new feature that I will show you a little bit later. Um, but if you also want to emulate the EM low frequency tags, you can just buy $2 EM4095 connected to Arduino or, or use, uh, for example, oh, I haven't taken it, uh, ready, to, ready uh, tools for that. Um, and you can also use Proxmark. Proxmark is um, the most renowned access control, uh, I don't know, uh, RFID, sorry, RFID research, research uh, thing, uh, hardware. Uh, and uh, it comes a little bit more ex expensive, but uh, gives you much more possibilities. Um, there are uh, cheaper um, Proxmarks, like I have here this, uh, this Chinese one. Um, uh, you can get it uh, a little bit cheaper, but uh, it comes with a uh, poorer antenna performance. But it's, in most cases, it works good enough. But if you are interested in buying one, I would recommend waiting for this Kickstarter. They will start selling uh, in July, and probably it will be the most uh, interesting, uh, the, the, the better one. I, 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 I hope so. Um, if you would like to emulate the card, you could, for example, brute force UID to get entrance to a restricted area. But uh, in many technologies, it doesn't make a lot of sense because the UIDs are random. Uh, but in some, it might be useful. So we can use Proxmark, for example, to brute force uh, sequential UIDs. Um, you can also use smartphone. Uh, so. Uh, in the smartphone, you can just simply read the UID. There are free mobile applications for that. Um, and just give you this uh, four byte UID number. Um, you can also emulate it. Uh, and it's, this is unfortunately not really easy um, because you probably know that you can emulate cards using your smartphone, but these are different kinds of cards. Uh, so. Uh, the access control based on UID works on a different level, uh, and these UIDs are by design, uh, by design random. So uh, I have managed to manipulate this process uh, in Android. Uh, so I can set any UID, specific one, and, and unlock uh, 
unlock the, the, the access control system, um, it just by simply editing the specific files in Android. You, you need root for this, um, but uh, then you can probably use your phone to, to your uh, access control system. Uh, that depends on the chip. Uh, just edit these config files in a, in a proper way. Uh, and I was thinking about creating mobile applications for that, but uh, someone else uh, uh, figured it out in the meantime. Um, so uh, there is a mobile uh, NFC card emulator application, um, and it just does that. Uh, if you'd like to play with it, it will be available at our booth uh, later. Uh, so you just scan for for application and uh, for, for, for UID, and then you can emulate it simply. Um, uh, for iPhone, um, there is also an option for that. Uh, you can use iPhone uh, if you have jailbreak. Uh, and it, it, I will just start the tag emulation, uh, and it unlocks the system. So um, it's, it's just simple as that. Uh, it, so if you'd like to play with it, like I mentioned, it will be available later. Um, but uh, do you think you can clone a card from a picture? Uh, has anyone seen such small numbers printed on the card somewhere? Um, like. Uh, how do you think what it is? <laughs> well, uh, of course it, it's your ID, uh, and uh, who's gonna tell me how to decode it? Any ideas? Uh, I have another reward. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly, it's decimal, you just convert it to hex. <laughs> um, <that's you. laughs> Thanks. Uh, in this case, you, you just convert it to hex. Uh, sometimes it might be reversed. Um, sometimes they use three bytes instead of four bytes, uh, but it's usually pretty simple. Uh, it might get a little bit complicated for all the tags, uh, but the, the, you just need to use specific digits of hex to convert it to decimal. Uh, but you've got uh, you've got uh, online calculators and extra sheets for that. So. Um, it is possible in many cases to clone a card based on the picture of it if you have these numbers just uh, printed on it. Uh, and this knowledge doesn't seem to be very common among users. So um, I don't think that hiding access card is uh, encouraged practice. <laughs> but uh, we still haven't taught them to actually do not put stickers on, on, uh, with pin numbers on, on, on the cards. So. I guess uh, it will take some time. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you just want to enter the building, you don't need to have a valid card. You just have any card, and the next person will uh, will allow you, uh, will uh, <laughs> will let you in. So, uh, well, just use us. Um, so. Uh, we know that in the simple systems, this UID is just uh, uh, accessible for all, and uh, it's not protected. So out of this need, uh, there came new cards that uh, uh, allow you to, uh, that, that store this UID in a protected way. So uh, this, is, uh, this was more secure, encrypted, and so on. Uh, and uh, only valid li reader can read this, this tag because it has the matching key. And uh, it became quite popular and uh, uh, the system went uh, in, in many, uh, was, was implemented in many places. And can anyone tell me, is there any problem with this? Like, uh, I will quote the guy who did it. Um, you can break a single, single reader once, and then you can enter anywhere. So they actually did it. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I don't have enough time to e explain this, but th this was a brilliant hack. By, they, they bypassed memory access uh, protections in the reader. Uh, 
and uh, they didn't they didn't reveal the key itself, uh, but uh, only the way to to reveal uh, to to dig it out of the reader. And uh, well, it's it found its way into the internet. And by the way, it's not the exact key needed, and it's well, just the first key. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, I won't reveal you <laughs> more <laughs> about this. Uh, and uh, this. Uh, forced uh, the manufacturer to create more secure ones, which have individual keys per installation. Um, by the way, if you'd like to know a little bit about memory access uh, readout protections and bypassing it in microcontrollers, I will do a short live demo of it at our booth uh, today at 3.15 and tomorrow uh, also. Uh, so, uh, what happens between the reader and and the door. Um, typically, it is connected to some access control backend system, and in most cases, uh, it's you, it uses so-called Wigand. Uh, it's uh, it uses just three wires, and this is data zero, data one, and ground. And the transmission is, is pretty simple. So you have five volts, and when it drops down to zero, it means it means zero on data zero, and it means one on data one. So uh, it's it's pretty simple, and uh, just just the clear text bytes of the of the TAC UID are transmitted along with parity bits. Uh, so. Even if you have uh, secured the communication between the reader and the card, the card is uh, impossible to clone, for example, it's quite often that this, what happens after the reader, is clear text. And the readers are quite often easily detachable. So like the simplest ones you can just unscrew and have access to the internals. So uh, I think you would know uh, <laughs> What, what happened next? Well, uh, we do have several such small plugs. <laughs> Let, uh, let's call it, uh, it's, it's this size, so you can easily attach it uh, at the back of the reader. And this one uh, just uh, collects all the UIDs of, the, of all the cards, and then you can connect to it using Bluetooth uh, to this one. Uh, uh, to this one, you can connect using Wi-Fi. So it's, this is just its own access point, and uh, you can just download all the all the collected uh, credentials. So for that, uh, I would advise to use tamper protection because most uh, more advanced readers have tamper protection wires, but unfortunately, many, in many cases, they are not connected. Um, and of course, multiple layers of security, breach detection, and so on. Uh, there is OSDP uh, that encrypts this connection, but uh, it's not very common. So, uh, some cards uh, beside the UID also have, have a data, like MIFR, for example. And the simplest uh, MIFR is the MIFR Ultralight. Uh, it doesn't have any security. Um, it just uh, stores the data. Uh, and uh, in order to read it, you can use just um, a free mobile application, uh, like MIFR++ Ultralight. Uh, and I'll try to demo it. OK. So. I have this uh, mobile phone. Uh, I'll just take. Uh, uh, um, yeah. Um, example ultralight hotel card uh, and use the MIFA uh, plus plus card. And it's just the content of the card. Um, it's scrambled. We'll get to this how to decode it later. But if you just want to clone this card, uh, you just uh, take a magic card and press right and put the card, and it's done. So the card is cloned now, and it works in lots of hotels. Uh, it's that simple. You just you just need to have a special tag 
um, that allows you to write uh, this restricted areas, this UID of the card using Android. Uh, but these tags are available. Um, there are a little bit more secure uh, ultralight cards like EV1 uh, that have ECC uh, authenticity check, but uh, you can have more <laughs> advanced magic, uh, magic key tags to emulate them. So I would advise to use ultralight C, which is properly encrypted. Uh, so let's move to the MyFair Classic. It's probably the most widely used system. Uh, and it's everywhere. Uh, there are city cards, access control, student IDs, memberships, uh, internal payments, and so on and so on. Uh, it stores the data in sectors, and each sector has several blocks. Uh, and you have access keys uh, to specific, to specific uh, uh, sector. So uh, the thing is that the lots of cards use just uh, very simple keys. Uh, so you can just simply brute force them or use the default ones. Uh, like uh, you can use, again, free mobile application for that. Uh, and I'll try to show it. Um, Oh, yeah. So I will just take a, a simple MIFA card. Um, I will try to read it. And it has just a dictionary of the known keys. So now I have all the card content. Yeah. Um, uh, if I only know the, key, the proper keys. Um, so um, I would uh, just uh, make a simple graph how to crack my classic. Uh, if, you, if you have all, you, you can just try the default and leaked keys. Uh, so then uh, if, if you succeed in it, well, well done. It, it may take a few seconds, for example. But if you don't have all the keys, uh, and if you have at least one, and it's quite often that, uh, that some sectors are left uh, the, with the default keys, uh, you perform so-called nested attack. Um, I will a little bit fast forward here, because it will be just for, your, for the reference. Um, you can do this nested attack using, using even this, this cheapest uh, uh, LibNFC. Uh, it takes like several minutes. Um, and if you'd like to do it using Proxmark, it takes about mm, one, maybe two seconds per key. So it's not really time consuming. Um, so again, uh, but if, if the card is properly secured, so uh, it doesn't have any uh, any keys left in default, um, then you can use another attack uh, that works uh, a little bit slower. Uh, using this hardware, it takes it can take up to up to an hour, but uh, using Proxmark, it takes about 30 seconds. Um, and if you have at least one key, you can proceed with the other attack. So these attacks were just a simple. Uh, implementation flows, like problems with random number generator or, or a site channel. So it was quite easy for the, for the um, vendor to patch it by just by releasing special uh, improved hardened, hardened cards. Uh, so we have my favorite classic EV1. Uh, it fixes the export vectors, and these attacks do not work anymore. Uh, but we have another attack, uh, which came out in 2015. And you can also use, uh, use this hardware for this attack. Uh, and there is a tool that automates this very easily. Uh, so uh, it's called My Lazy Tracker. Uh, and uh, you can perform this hardness to the attack also using uh, Proxmark if you want. Um, but what if you don't have any, any keys on the hardware card? Well, uh, 
then you can re still recover the key but by online attack, but you need to go to the reader and you need uh, special hardware like this, for example. Um, it just, uh, it's $45 hardware. You just program it using GUI to collect the keys, let's call it, to sniff the communication. Uh, and then come back uh, to, the, to your laptop and uh, crack the key. Uh, okay. So, uh, final NXP recommendation from 2015 is do not use the MIFR Classic. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, well, of course, it's not easy to upgrade such systems. Uh, so, they use some workarounds that make the attack more difficult, like, and force you to to buy this and go to the reader. Um, and, well, these are like workarounds that do not completely fix the problem. So you should uh, migrate to a more secure chips like this fire, for example. Uh, but it's also important to implement them correctly because I have seen systems that uh, use this fire but check only for the UID. Uh, so, uh, of course, it depends on the implementation. Um, okay, so um, we know how to get access to the card content, but as you probably noticed, uh, the example of the card I showed you was somehow encoded. Um, it, it's quite often uh, encoded using this individual UID, so it's diversified fed card, so the same data is, data is stored in a different way on a different card. So let's take a look at two cards from the same room, for the same room and the same hotel. And the red ones are differences, and they are pretty different. Well, even if we discard this card UID that's on in the beginning, I suppose at the end is some kind of checksum. Uh, so in the middle, we have encoded access card data, and it's pretty different, but uh, do you notice anything suspicious about it? How can we decode it? Yeah, the repeating uh, seven, seven E or eight two, like yeah, things. And the question is, how can we decode it? Like, yes, uh, probably. Yeah, we don't know the key. Maybe. But how do we reveal the clear text? Yeah? Xol. You said Xol, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Xol is, is a good answer. So thanks for this. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, if, if we just Xol uh, this by 7e, well, we can assume that probably over there there are just zeros. Uh, so we will just exit this by 7e, and we'll get the, let's say, the clear text version. Uh, so now if we compare the two rooms, uh, the difference is much smaller. So uh, we have decoded this, this magic uh, uh, encryption, let's call it <laughs> encoding algorithm. So we could proceed with uh, different cards to the different uh, hotels and uh, different rooms and so on. Um, this guy wasn't as much positive <laughs> uh, like, like these guys uh, that followed this. Uh, this, is, it, this was the initial step in the, in the research. Uh, and they finally made it uh, thanks, among others, to the fact that they had a lot of, lots of cards. Uh, thanks to hundreds of, uh, of travels of, of, of a colleague. Uh, and uh, they got the hotel software uh, from FTP, and they also got the serial number that was in the <laughs> software manual. So they were able to create uh, their, own, uh, uh, their own master card. Uh, but it didn't work in real hotel because all the hotels have individual keys. So uh, they Create, got MasterCard from a friend hotel and just tried to fuzz it. What, what's the minimal bytes required for this to work? So it turned out that just by having any guest card and a few minutes, uh, brute force, you can, they, ca they could create MasterCard and they used Proxmark for this. 
So uh, it's about how, how it worked. Um, but I have for you another hotel that I have revised and created uh, MasterCard for it uh, using similar techniques. Uh, so I have another reward. Um, so this is the hotel data. And the question is that I have checked in yesterday evening what time is my checkout. Can you find the date? Yeah, exactly. Thanks. <laughs> so it's pretty, yeah. And how about the room number? Uh, 114. <laughs> yeah. So this hotel stores the data in a very simple way, uh, this hotel system. And I have managed to create a master, master card that unlocks all the doors in a given hotel. Uh, it, actually, in all the hotels that use it. Mm, uh, and it takes me about a minute if I just have a guest card for this. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry, I can't tell you exactly how I did it because the vendor doesn't plan to patch it. Um, so uh, it will have to remain a mystery. Um, well, maybe I'll just give you a, a short video. Uh, it's, it was one of the hotels that uses it. Uh, it was a four-star hotel. I won't tell you where. So I just created a MasterCard and I just walked and unlocked everything. <laughs> So uh, it's, it's not as funny as it looks like. It's, it's just boring. <laughs> but, you know. Um, so uh, I'm really sorry, but I couldn't resist uh, 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 this, uh, this slide. Well, of course, my hack wasn't uh, even remotely close to the original ones. But uh, well, I just couldn't resist, and I just had to put this slide. <laughs> um, by the way, this vendor uh, has a website, and on, on its website, it has a list of all the hotels that implement the system. So you can browse by the country, and you can browse by the uh, hotel name, and so on. Uh, there are lots of pictures. Uh, there are, in most cases, very luxury hotels. And I'm sorry <laughs> I won't give it to you either. You will have to believe me that this is true. <laughs> Uh, and I suppose not a lot of you know uh, that you can create some kind of crime s special card that's called crime scene card. Uh, so it locks the door permanently uh, and you cannot open it even if you have a master card. So the door needs to be forced open and police needs to break it. So I'm sorry, I won't give it to you either. Um, but what's actually real risk uh, with it? Well, um, you might argue that some hotels still use such cards, like this plastic with, uh, with uh, uh, just printed small dots. Uh, we've seen this in real life like two weeks ago. Uh, we use much less secure keys in our doors uh, every day. Uh, of course, there's monitoring guards and so on. So. What's the problem? Well, uh, well, of course, it depends. Uh, if you didn't uh, hear this, I, I recommend to uh, reading it. It's a great story of a hotel hacker by, by Andy Greenberg that used just the DEFCON published information about how to, how to break uh, special uh, uh, hotel locks. And he was just driving several years and stealing everything from towels to t TVs. And another story uh, about assassination of one of Hamas leaders was also related to hacking doll, uh, hotel door locks. Um, so uh, enough for, for hotels. Uh, if you are interested in uh, city cards, uh, there is a recent mobile application that just reads the uh, card data and uh, decodes it, uh, how much, uh, how much uh, 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 has left and so on. Uh, it, it's not intended to be used as uh, editing the data, uh, but you can see how, how the guy reversed the thing. He just took several trips and just compared the, the diffs uh, of the binary. Um, 
And uh, some uh, vendors used very simple uh, ways, the static keys and so on. So uh, even uh, in Poland in, in 2013, it was already uh, a mobile application that, uh, it, of course, if you have the keys, you can use a simple mobile application to access the data. And they find out, figured out how to decode it and, and clone it. Um, and recently, also, another guy was sentenced for, uh, for claiming uh, money back from Oyster Cards. But it took seven years for Oyster Cards to, to switch to a different, a different system. Um, so, uh, mobile access uh, is just a, just a simple, uh, quick preview of, of my recent research. Um, well, everyone knows and I think agrees that we are going mobile, so access control systems also are going mobile, so we have access control systems that unlock the door using NFC in your phone. Uh, it works uh, similarly to mobile contactless payments, um, uses the same technology. Um, I spoke about it in last year, uh, if you're interested in security of this technology. Um, and it there are rumors that it will be soon available also in iOS. Um, so uh, we'll see. Uh, in most cases in, in of the systems that I, that I have checked, um, it's just a new mobile application that, that uh, works as a card. So it connects to this reader, and in many cases, we still have this Wigan thing in the back end. Um, the mobile application just stores the uh, the key that is specific to the reader, and this UID that is, that is uh, based, uh, th this user-specific UID. Um, so what could possibly go wrong in such system? Well, well of course, uh, malware, for example, could steal the card data from, from, uh, from your phone. Uh, but there is another risk. Uh, a malicious user that has full control over his phone, he, he could manipulate this uh, card data, this UID stored in his phone, and try to get access to other restricted areas. Uh, and it was actually the thing that I would manage to do in one of, the, of the systems. Um, oh, there is also another attack. Uh, malicious user could get administrative access to the reader also. Uh, it's just the, the, they often use the same keys, but just a different card content. Um, so I will probably publish some more info about it soon. And I think um, many vendors uh, uh, are, are just missing a new opportunity to make it right. So uh, we could create an end-to-end -end encryption from mobile phone to the backend if we just exchange the backend and individual keys that are mutually uh, authenticated. And I've seen just one single system uh, that works like this. Um, so by the way, it's, it's not really easy to get such system, not only because uh, you have uh, lots of, uh, it takes usually like uh, a thousand UIDs uh, and multiple readers to buy, uh, but also, if you, if you try to ask for this to get it for testing, uh, the vendors get suspicious. So I, from one vendor, I got this email. Um, well, maybe I shouldn't have emailed him from smartlockpicking.com. <laughs> but uh, but I'm really glad that he was uh, he was uh, so honest because it allowed us to cooperate further, actually. Uh, so uh, I guess we're just running out of time. Um, so uh, for the end, I'll just uh, uh, finish with, with some with some uh, uh, risk considerations. Like we manage, uh, we uh, measure the risk by the impact uh, times probability or is of exploitation. And in the beginning, probably uh, it was very difficult to exploit such systems. Like you needed to have this proxmark, which was way more expensive at the beginning. No one knew how to do it. But uh, with time, the conditions to exploit just uh, uh, are very easier. 
Uh, and uh, I think we may have already crossed this thin, thin red line that uh, uh, makes this risk real, in fact. So you should, of course, design the system properly. And I would always repeat that own crypto is, is a bad idea. Uh, it, not always the uh, secrecy is a bad idea. Uh, so uh, in, in such systems, uh, you can use uh, non-public uh, specification, but this specification, uh, this system should not require the secrecy. So once the specification is public, no one is able to break it still. Um, and uh, if you just want to try some of these tricks that I showed you, you can just visit our booth over there near the, uh, near the chill, uh, chill zone. And if you are interested, I'm also providing trainings about it. The next uh, is in Hacking Paris. So, any questions? <laughs> I will try it for a good question. <laughs> what about what about uh, what about longing the range of uh, the range? Well, I had slides for this. Uh, but uh, I decided that there was just too much. <laughs> so, uh, well, regarding the range, um, well, it's just the physics. So um, uh, it's like uh, you could, there, there are scientific, uh, uh, scientific uh, research for this. Uh, you can read the communication from the reader to the card from like 20 meters. But you cannot read the communication from the card to the reader uh, because uh, it's the reader that is uh, that is that has active power. Uh, the tag has no power; it's it's just inducted by the uh, by the coil of the uh, of the reader. So uh, the communication from the tag to the reader you can sniff from like max three meters. But in in practice, actually, you can do it. Uh, in 60 centimeters, and uh, no one, uh, to my knowledge, managed to do it better than just buying a more expensive reader uh, that reads the tax from 60 centimeters, uh, and uh, just plugging uh, this special hardware to the back of the reader and turning it into, uh, into the sniffer. It was actually featured in Mr. Robot, for example. Uh, yeah. And what if Thanks. you have two antennas? Thank you. Um, no, it doesn't help. There are more different problems, like um, the quality of the uh, of the signal, and uh, you could fry the chip if you use too much power and so on. So, in practice, I think it's it's uh, just the uh, the. Uh, better readers that can uh, access the tag from, from a distance. Thanks. OK, you showed uh, tools to dump MIFR blocks with data, but the specification of, yeah, here, here. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's but, just the light. Uh, but specification of MIFR uh, brings uh, counters blocks. So yes, how many yes. of this software, because uh, uh, some of the uh, sh um, yes. tools you, like uh, you can have or mm -hmm. hook, yeah, uh, they can dump those blocks. But uh, these tools for um, smartphones, they got ability to dump these blocks with the proper content, or uh. are made only for. Data blocks. Uh, yeah, well, using uh, blocks that are counters, it's one of the tricks that you can limit a little bit the risk. Um, but it's still possible to reveal them, not using mobile phone, uh, to my knowledge. Um, but uh. yeah, I, I was curious that if the software on, for the smartphones got ability to dump those blocks. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I haven't actually researched it very deeply, but uh, uh, the one that I figured, uh, uh, I just did it in, in a different way, not using smartphone.
Yep. I am very surprised that the vendor uh, don't have patching this because it is very, mm, uh, very luck to have access to many plays. And uh, can you repeat the question? <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it's not a question. Maybe it's some um, my fault. So this is. Uh, I'm very surprised that the vendor uh, cannot wants to. Uh, uh, fix uh, the bug that you ah, find. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's a common problem for security researchers to uh, explain your intentions to the vendor. Like, yes, <laughs> it's very difficult to explain. Like, they just treat you like someone who wants to help them, and they can't understand your intentions. Like, <laughs> I don't need to publish it. It's not the. I, I just want to learn about it. How to how to fix it? Like. So it's it's not easy to explain my intentions to the vendor. Like, <laughs> right? Hi. Only one question. Uh, is it possible to use all the content measures and use the NFC proper way so it's secure? Well, uh, is it possible? Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends on your risk, uh, your, your individual risk. Like, uh, if you. Uh, um, if you want to use my fair, uh, and I would suggest you to use this fire, but if you can't do this, well, um, probably you can do all the tricks and countermeasures to make the attacks much harder. So in order to attack your system, one would need to have this, it's $45, and would go, need to go to the original reader. Um, and if you would di diversify the keys, uh, so he would be able to crack only his own card. So this would probably limit the risk uh, to a level that is good enough for you. I don't know. That depends. But it's not possible to make it like secure, secure. Well, nothing is 100% secure. There is no such thing. <laughs> but uh, we just can do it good okay. enough like okay. for your case. Okay. Thank you. I think we don't have enough time, but I will be around uh, at our booth. And if you have any more questions or would like to play with it, just feel free to reach me anytime. So thank you. Thank you.